Time now for our daily focus report, and we go to the British capital, where the homicide rate has surged. 50 percent more people were killed in the first four months of 2018 than in the same period last year. On average, someone is killed every three days in the city. Our reporters Haxi Myers-Belkin and Julien Sauvage met victims' families and others trying to stop the violence. In March this year, 36-year-old Julian Joseph was attacked by two men on a London bus. He suffered a severe head injury and died 11 days later. His cousin Michelle was by his side. I put my head on his chest and put my arms around him. And his heart was like just going fainter and fainter and fainter. He, he, he knew that he was loved and he loved his family. And he was a good man. He was a kind gentle, humble person. And I don't, I don't know, I don't even really watch the news anymore. I don't want to hear about how many lives have been taken to violence now. Over 80 people were murdered in London in the first half of 2018. That's compared to 116 murders in the whole of 2017, excluding victims of terrorism. Most murders in the capital now involve a blade, while many victims and perpetrators are under 18. They're also disproportionately black. Labour MP Sarah Jones is chair of the all-party parliamentary group on knife crime. In London, it's true that most of the people who we've seen being stabbed are young black men. But in Scotland, most of the people who are the victims of youth violence are young white men. For her, it's less a question of race than of poverty and the increasingly pernicious effects of social media. Social media companies allow anything to be posted online and not enough illegal content is taken down. So you can go and you can see images of actual knives, people being stabbed, people being murdered even on YouTube. And in addition, you have gangs goading each other by putting videos online where they're actively inciting violence. The UK Children's Commissioner says 70,000 under 25s are now members of a gang network. Ex-gang member Jermaine Lawler set up donation-funded Voice for Youth Against Violence to offer young people an alternative to a life of crime. He met George five years ago. I was in robberies, weed, even selling cocaine. But now I'm out of that. I've got my own business started. Now I've got my own business going to call the service window cleaning, car wash, painting. And I stand I could do music as well. I'm working on my mixtape. George may now have found his feet, but he remembers the sense of belonging he felt as part of a gang. He recalls a night his fellow gang member was stabbed trying to protect him. He had the knife in his hand and I saw him take, take the knife out of him and he was squirting blood to this day, but he survived. That's why he's a warrior, but I've seen that happen for myself. A brother like that took that for me. That's a friend. Understand? That's what that's that's what happens in gangs. There's people that like, you can get gangs that are just there to use you and to and just to fuck you up. Yeah, but then you get gangs that are family. A family that steps in when real families are broken by poverty, neglect, and addiction. Uh, no one from up city is going to come down and say, hey, look, let me just grab you quickly. You don't need to be that. No, it's going to be someone straight from him in the streets saying, bro, let me look after you. And he, he can't look after himself, but the love in there, he sees that. A fondest memory of Ben. Confronted with London's gang culture, charities are working on prevention. The Ben Kinsella Trust uses an interactive exhibition to teach school children about the consequences of carrying a knife. Ben uh, was a real, live, living boy who grew up in, in their neighborhood. And that helps give you the sense that this is not something that we're making up, this is something that's real. Children are shown footage of the night Ben was killed. This is Ben walking away, having been stabbed 11 times in five seconds. Then, after discussing the legal and medical repercussions of knife crime... OK, so you're the newbie. Welcome to my cell. A sobering prison cell encounter. That just gives them a little bit of food for thought about uh, what choices they'll make and where they could end up if, if they make the wrong choice. And yet so many do. 
In East London, PC Chowdhury is leading a search for weapons in a public park. Uh, there's a bit of intel that a group of um, uh, males, they have been hiding weapons inside the bushes here so that it's readily accessible to them instead of having it on them because when they get stopped and searched, obviously they get arrested, so they normally hide it in the bushes. Minutes after entering the park, they find a knife with a 10 centimeter long blade. In eight years, the British government has cut 20,000 police officers, with London set to lose a further 3,000 by 2020. Police numbers are being slashed, even as the knives pile up. Hello, how are you? Well, that's it from the newsroom. Please stay tuned to France 24.